session chair for the next session i would like to request the av team for a special video that we've made for you neelam ji hi everyone welcome to the neelam show aaj hum ek naya game khelenge so are you all excited yes main ek shabd kahungi aur use sunkar aapke dimag mein jo pehla shabd aata hai aap aapko wo kehna hai acting lights lights camera camera action action drama drama movies movies dance dance bollywood bollywood glamour glamour jewelry jewelry diamonds diamonds timeless timeless charm charm fabulous fabulous neela aapke aajane aapke aajane आपके आ जाने से वेलकम बिफोर वी फॉर्मली बिगिन आर प्रोग्राम आई लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट मिस आयुषी अग्रवाल सुनील अग्रवाल एंड एसोसिएट सी एफ ओ टू प्लीज वेलकम मिस नीलम कोठारी सोनी टूडे प्लीज गिव अज राउंड ऑफ अ प्लॉज moment has come we've been waiting for this since morning and uh, before we officially begin uh, the neelam show uh, let me take a moment to thank our sponsors without whom this show wouldn't have been possible so i'd like to thank push masala imami apsara tea kimirika atulyam organics uniform wala for the jute bags that you'll get avi agri yellow diamond jain foods om namkeen Shri Agrawal Sweets, Risha Candles. We'll also like to thank our partners, the radio partner My FM, logistic partner Soumya Prince, uh, technical partner IPS College, beauty and salon partner Ritu Beauty and Salon, and carbon-free event partner Creating a Greener Tomorrow. So please give a huge round of applause for our sponsors. Wow, that's a lot of sponsors. <laughs> first of all be before we begin hi everyone hi hi <laughs> it's a pleasure being back in indore i came a uh, couple of years back for my jewelry exhibition and it's uh, wonderful you know the warmth i've received and thank you i am a for having me here and i hope um this session makes sense to you guys <laughs> So thank you so much Neelam. Uh you know if you think it is surreal that she's sitting right right in front of all of us please take a moment because I am also taking time. So ladies and some gentlemen hold on to your seats because we are about to listen to someone who shines brighter than the diamonds she works with. She's the queen of both big screen and the jewelry scene. Talk about double duty. If style, grace and a dash of sparkle were superpowers, this woman would be saving the world. If elegance had a spokesperson, it would be her. And if glamour could talk, well, it would ask for her for autograph. 
So without further ado, let's give it up for one and only the woman who makes fabulous looks like an understatement, Neelam. Thank you. That's a wonderful intro, one of the best I've received, honestly. <laughs> Thank you so much. So this, because it's the Neelam show, we'll have different segments. Let us have the first segment, which will make you settle and answer a lot of queries about, because everybody around us who's been meeting her off stage has been asking about her charm. So let's begin our first segment called Neelam the Charmer. So your grace and elegance have always been admired. How do you maintain that charm through different phases of life? Gosh, I mean, it's, it's a tough question because um, being a woman uh, post 50, uh, I'm sure there are some women out there post 50 who feel, who know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a very difficult phase. Uh, you're going into a transition. But I think one advice uh, to all the women out there is I think you've got to do something that you really enjoy and that you're passionate about, you know, be it embroidery, painting, um, whatever work. I think that, um, that is something that sort of keeps me going and it's, it's important to keep your mind sort of occupied and, and, and it, gives, it gives you purpose every morning when you wake up in the morning, you know, you just want to have something interesting to look forward to. So, are you, do you work out, are you a fitness freak? I hate working out. <laughs> I hate the gym, okay? But, but, having said that, since the past six months, uh, because my friends, the other three, have given me so much grief, they said like, they're like, Neelam, it's about time, you know, you need to hit the gym. So, uh, yes, I do work out. I, I walk. Uh, walking is my favorite because I get to chat with my friends. I always make sure I have company whilst I walk so I can hear the latest goss. <laughs> uh, so, yes, I do work out. And um, I'm very, very, you know, particular about what I eat when I'm in Bombay. But if I'm traveling, then, of course, you know, then I splurge. I eat whatever's in sight. You know, I eat, I drink, and I, I have a sweet tooth. Oh, those tiramisu's. <laughs> yeah, so I watch my diet a lot. So, see, the uh, idea behind this question is that, you know, uh, we, we, we call you the charmer. So, kahin kisi ko koi aisa secret mil jaye that they can take home. Probably that's the reason I'm asking. And uh, particularly, you know, your uh, fans still remember your iconic looks and fashion from the 80s and 90s. Is, is there any one fashion trend that you would want ki ye wapas aayega to bahut maza aayega? I wish I could recreate that. <laughs> In fact, when I look back at my, my old films and I, and I look at the stuff that I wore, so basically a little background, my Masi, my Masi and my mum used to do my, my styling. Hence the high necks. <laughs> Hence the long sleeves. <laughs> Hence no showing legs. <laughs> so, um, honestly, when I look back, yes, it was very stylish in those days. You know, the big hair and the big shoulder pads and the cowl skirts. It was all in fashion and the frilly dresses. I mean, when I look back, um, I mean, honestly, do I want that fashion back? No. <laughs> <laughs> but probably, you know, because we saw you like that, a lot of people started copying your fashion probably then. I think more than my fashion, it was my hairstyle, yes. the Neelam cut. I think, I think that was something which, and mind you, I used to cut it myself. Oh. So um, my hairdresser, my hairdresser, and um, you know, me, we just decided to chop my hair one day. We were bored waiting for the shot. And I said, you know what, let's just trim a little bit. Then. It went a little wrong, so I said, a little bit more. <laughs> That's how the fringe started. That's lovely. So, do you get ever surprised by the fact that, you know, uh, your, the younger fans still recognize you and they are in awe of you? Like, you just met my daughter, you know? So, she's like a six, from a six-year-old to probably a 65-year-old. Everybody likes you and admires you equally. How do you feel about that? I mean, I feel completely blessed because, um, you know, 
doing films back in the 80s and 90s, which is quite long back. <laughs> and to have uh, kids, growing kids, uh, teenagers, recognize me. And also, Ham Saat Saat Hai was a huge success. Um, Ham, Ham Saat Saat Hai and uh, Kuch Kuch Hota Hai. So, uh, and also my, my Netflix show, that's been uh, a complete game changer for me. Who has watched Fabulous Lives of Bollywood Wives? <laughs> well, season three is coming out on October 18th. So, uh, lots of drama, masala, and tears and laughter in store for you. <laughs> So with this, we move on to our next segment. But before we move on to our next segment, I'd like my AV team to play a little video for you, please. Tab tak bhaijan, aapke paas wali seat bhi full ho jani chahiye. Kamita, hamara to bhavi jan ke saath program fix hai. मुझे तमाचा मारो और मैं तुमसे प्यार करूं ये कैसे हो सकता है इंस्पेक्टर ये आदमी झूठ बोल रहा है इसे बाहर निकालो वरना मैं तुम सबको शूट कर दूंगी यू हैव ऑल द राइट टू फील द वे यू फील I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying you're perfect. That was wonderful. Please give them a huge round of applause. So our next segment is called Neelam, the actress. So if acting was a sport, what would be the most difficult part? Training, performing, or taking criticism? No, criticism, I was always open to it. I was absolutely fine. I think the most difficult thing for me, to be honest with you, because I was born and brought up in Hong Kong, I'm sure people are wondering why the accent I was... Uh, uh, born and brought up there, I did my schooling in Hong Kong. So the biggest challenge for me was my Hindi. So uh, in fact, the journalists, I, I just did gave some me media bites. So they said, how did you do 40 films if you didn't know Hindi? So I said, I used to get my dialogues in English. I used to memorize them. They used to give me the gist of the whole scene. And I just used to perform. That's how I did it. So. Yes, I mean, if you ask me what was challenging, I think it was a um, bit of the language and uh, the fight sequences. <laughs> so, you know, secretly everybody wishes, like for example, if you, I went for a shoot when I was a kid and I was, you know, being my best, you never know. I think that happened with you, right? You were on a holiday and you were offered the movie, your first movie. I was in, uh, I used to go to Bombay every year for my summer vacations. And I went for my friend's birthday party. And um, her dad uh, was Ramesh Behel. He was the producer, director of my first film. And, it, you know, in the olden days, you had those huge, massive uh, cameras, video recorders. And he was taking a film of the whole birthday party. And some boy hit, hit me on my back. And I turned and I gave him a dirty look. He said when he was watching the footage of the birthday party, he said, that's the girl who I want for my next film. And uh, he called up my parents and uh, he knew my family very well and my parents said, no. <laughs> so I was like, come on, you know. I, I never watched Hindi films, maybe Amitabh films, uh, but I never really watched Hindi films. I never wanted to join the film industry. It's something which just fell into my lap. And uh, I said, let me just do one film and go back home. That obviously didn't happen. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> I don't know. I think it was my destiny. I did my first film. Then my second film was Love 86, which was a huge success. 
and um, I was lucky. I had like a like a row of hits, one after the other. So um, there was this saying in the industry that whichever newcomer actor hero works with Neelam will be, will become a star. Oh. <laughs> So it's a joke between, you know, Sanjay Kapoor and, and Chunky Pandey. You know, when, whenever we meet, we, we're always joking about this. And uh, Samir says, damn, I should have worked with you then. <laughs> he was in America working with, on, on Wall Street, so another country. So, you know, a lot of us have seen all, like most of your movies. Any one behind the scene moment that you would want to uh, remember, which was very funny and... Probably it's, it's just between you all, but we can't Google it and find out, so probably you can tell us. Well, it's uh, working with Chunky Pandey was a lot of fun, but also it was, uh, it was very, very painful working with him because I have many, many stories about him. I mean, he's, he's a dear friend, but there were days where I wanted to just kill him. Okay, the shot would be ready. It was his first film, Aghi Agh. I had done two, three films. And when you're getting, preparing, prepping for a shot, the lighting is going on. You're rehearsing your lines. You do your, you know, rough rehearsal. And you're ready for take, make, touch up done, make up done. Uh, where's Chunky? He would always be in the bathroom just before the take. <laughs> so... And I would want to kill him because in those days we didn't have air conditioners on sets. So it would be like the whole thing all over again, you know, doing your touch up and everything. Uh, again, another story with Chunky. Uh, there was a scene in Aghiag in the climax. I'm supposed to get married to someone else. And he comes hero style on his motorbike and he picks me up from the mandap. I said, Chunky, are you sure? you know how to ride a motorbike. Yeah, 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 don't worry. <laughs> I said, Chunky, are you sure? Okay, so he said, yeah, yeah, Nino, don't worry. Anyway, we're ready for the shot. I, he, I climb onto the bike and he zooms off. He zooms off and he decides to do a wheelie. Okay, I knew things were out of control. I, that he did that wheelie, obviously he didn't know what he was doing. He could not ride a motorcycle. That motorbike has fallen on me, I burnt my leg. So yes, and that scar is still there, so thanks to Chunky. <laughs> so is there any movie that uh, you know you would want to do again because you had a lot of fun? Any one particular movie? I think uh, Ek Ladka Ek Ladki because uh, it was just so much fun. You know, working with Salman and those three kids, it was it was a super fun film. Um, also, Ham Saat Saat Hai. I think that's where I I truly made like friends in the industry. Uh, Sonali, Tabu, Lolo. Uh, I made real friendships out of that film. All right. So, do you actually practice sometimes? You know, you forget that you know you're not on set, and maybe sometimes say real dialogues in your real life uh, situation, say for example, uh, you would say, tumne aurat ko nahi samjha Samir. Wo andhero se nahi darti. Wo jab wo faisla kar leti hai, to apne man mein vishwaas ka diya jala kar usse apni maang ka sindoor bana leti hai. Does it happen? I, I would translate that. <laughs> uh, I, I would say it in another language. <laughs> All right, so like we move on to the next segment. We're being very quick. You're very good with dialogues, I uh, must say. I, <laughs> three days, I've not learned my script, I've learned this dialogue. And thanks to my daughter who's played like Ham Saat Saat 200 times. <laughs> so we have a next section called Neelam Kothari, The Businesswoman. But before that, let us take a quick commercial break. May I request the AV team to play the sponsor's video, please? There were a few sponsors we would still like to mention. Uh, Aurobindo, Sri Aurobindo Group of Institutes, Sunil Agrawal and Associates, ARJ Select, this is a pre-owned luxury car, uh, Medicaps Institute, iMast, SBI, Pure Assure, Arihant, Sonic Biochem, Sigma Chemicals, Patanjali, NIFD and Zenith Drugs and DCBM.
after a short break and we come to our next segment called Neelam Kothari. Neelam, the businesswoman. So you transitioned from becoming a very good actor. You were like almost at the top when you stopped acting. Uh, and you became a jewelry designer. Everybody calls you, you know, the famous actress and the famous jewelry designer. Was it a cakewalk? Because you come from a family which was into jewels. Was it that easy for you? Or did people say, Ye toh, because she's not acting, she's into jewelry? Did, did that happen with you? That did happen. I mean, it, it was very challenging. I mean, jewelry is my family business since four generations. And when I was not shooting, I would be with my dad in the office learning the ins and outs of the business and the trade and, you know, learning about diamonds and production and all, all that. And uh, when I started my own line, yes, I did get that a lot. It's, you know, where I am today, it's taken me many, many years because in the beginning, no one took me seriously. And jewelry with Indians is all about faith. And uh, to, to garner that faith from the client took me many years and um, it was word of mouth and uh, they, they knew that it was the family business but they were like concerned about the quality. So for me, when a client came back to me to make place an order or to buy something, that's when I knew that, okay, I'm on the right tracks. But yeah, that took me, that took me a fair bit of time. So, you know, balancing business with the public persona, how do you balance that, you know, because there's a lot of pressure from both the sides, being in business and managing this public life. So behind closed doors, I'm a different person because I'm, I'm quite the task master. Um, uh, when it comes to bargaining, uh, I am a Gujarati. So <laughs> when I'm buying my color stones and I'm buying my diamonds, uh, the brokers, uh, they're like, Listen, she's a hard nut to crack. <laughs> I'm hard. I'm, I'm a yeah. I'm a hardcore business person when it comes to when it comes to my work. Um, yeah, even sometimes you know, be it my staff. I'm here because of my staff, and I love them. They're my extended family. But um, yeah, I'm, I would say I'm kind of strict. <laughs> so you know understand so much about jewelry and gems so gems for centuries have often been associated with their healing powers and a lot of spiritual power do you believe in that uh, and you know just like probably I'm asking a personal question uh, people say they don't wear a diamond it doesn't suit you but I love diamond and probably I would want to wear a bigger one so is that okay well uh, I do believe in it to a certain extent I I'm wearing uh, Three knee limbs. <laughs> I don't want to show which finger I'm wearing it on. <laughs> uh, I've been wearing this for the longest time. And um, does it suit me? Yes, I think it does. An astrologer many, many years ago told me that um, if you wear this, uh, you know, it's a powerful stone. It will either make you or break you. And if it suits you, then, um, you know, it's, it's amazing. So I've had this on for uh, many, many years. Uh, I just feel that color stones have uh, vibrations. They do have certain vibrations and healing powers, maybe, but it does not change your destiny. Um, it's it's all in your head if you think that um, you know wearing a diamond or not wearing a diamond or wearing a ruby is just is just going to change your life. No, it changes your vibration to a certain extent. I think I think that is something very new for all of us, and it is it is actually enlightening. Yeah, colors have vibrations, right? So even color stones have certain uh, properties um, in them and uh, vibrations. So when it comes to gemstones, people often talk about the four C's: that is, cut, clarity, color, and carrot. Which of these do you think holds the most importance, and why? I'll repeat: it's cut, the clarity, color, and carrot. Uh, I don't have an answer for that because every client, um, their priority is different. There's some customers who come to me and say that I want a diamond, but I, I want it to look big. I'd, I'll compromise on the quality. Some clients say I don't mind the diamond looking small, but I'm not compromising on the quality. So there is no answer to that. It just depends on... Uh, everyone's individual taste. So 
like gemstones like you know rubies or emeralds or diamonds they've been very popular among are there any underrated gems which you know people must wear and they are lovely but they don't wear because they're not in the limelight i think people uh the from what i understand clients are little unsure about color stones because they they're not sure about the pricing uh diamond pricing is very transparent so i think if you are buying color stones buy it from someone who's very very re reliable because i've had customers coming to me and saying that oh i paid this much for this emerald set and i'm like okay but <laughs> it's really not worth that much um yeah it's it's you know just got to be careful buying color sto stones from whom uh, you know so as an entrepreneur do you ever think that if some advice would have been given what advice should have been given to you in the beginning so you probably would have made lesser mistakes or is there something that you thought you should have known i think my dad i learned everything from my father he taught me everything from scratch um he in fact you know forget about teaching me i saw ups and downs in his career i saw ups and downs in my career so i think um you know i think one is always prepared when you see when you see two sides of the coin both sides of the coin with that we come to our next segment called neelam the bollywood wife so i think this is something which is which everybody has been talking about uh, you know while we are having a conversations also because latest you know we've seen her in that particular show and we've loved her first thing without even looking at my questions uh when i say that you know i'm going to be talking to you everybody else, please ask her how come she's so calm and poised and you know balanced all the time i'm not i'm a crazy woman <laughs> <laughs> only my friends and my husband see that side of me um yes of course uh, by nature inherently i am polite i am calm but when i lose it i i'm a mad person <laughs> <laughs> you made a lot of our wish come true you know everybody wants to be fly on the wall when the bollywood wives are talking so probably with this show i think everybody has got to be that fly on the wall because we know the inside stories to an extent i think how did this show happen uh, you know what how what was your reaction when it came to you were you excited were you like oh these are my friends how can i do this with them you know like a show with them so uh there was karan um seema bhavna mahip gauri um karan chartered a flight because a very dear friend's father passed away in delhi so uh we were on a private plane okay and we were just chatting someone was on a diet one person was like am i underdressed am i overdressed and then we were squabbling we were fighting we were gossiping he was like you women are mad okay and i have to make a show on your lives so we were like yeah yeah karan that's too good you know we'll be on netflix and amazon we had no clue that what you getting into <laughs> we had no clue that he was serious and this would actually happen you know uh, here we are going for a funeral which is very sad and here he he is talking of a concept of a reality show So I said yes 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 come on let's shoot the pilot and everything anyway when I got that call from Karan he said Neelam uh I'm I want you to come home for a meeting regarding that show I was like oh god <laughs> I don't want to be part of this Karan he said why uh I said listen I'm I'm a very private person and I don't want my life out there I'm I'm facing the camera probably after 15 20 years you know I mean people will be seeing me after 15 20 years I have aged I'm I'm conscious of that fact uh I don't want my daughter and my husband I I don't want any of it on camera He said look if you're going to do this show um it's going to be a game changer you're not realizing it but if you do it you've got to give it your 100% because it's reality and uh I I asked Samir and I said you know so Samir said I think uh, you're giving yourself too much importance just do it <laughs> so uh yeah then I finally told Karan that okay I am on board having said that Seema was the first one 
to say yes. She was too excited. <laughs> was it harder to work for an OTT and a show like this or movies were harder? It's very different. Um, but having said that, season one was not so difficult. Uh, season two was a little more challenging uh, because you're, you're scratching deeper into your life and your personality, your equation with your friends. And season three was, was the most difficult because um, you're scratching deeper. The audience wants to know more, more about Neelam, more about Mahib, more about Seema and Bhavna. And uh, the, the, you know, when you scratch the surface uh, and you have to dig deeper, it's a lot more difficult because you have to be true and honest. And sometimes that honesty and that truth, sometimes it's very, very difficult to accept and say. Uh, was there a moment when you thought, you know, you forgot that there were cameras around and then you were like, no, no, don't capture this, you know? Did, hap did that happen? It happens all the time. <laughs> We're always saying the wrong things. <laughs> and then we're like, no, 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 cut that out, cut that out. Uh, yeah, sometimes we forget. We're just constantly rambling, rambling. And, you know, the lots of things which are politically incorrect, which have to be cut out. <laughs> so, yes, it does happen. If you could add one more Bollywood wife to this group, who would it be? Nobody. <laughs> I think the show works is because the four of us have known each other for 25 years and uh, we have three more wives from Delhi um, who've been added on to the cast. So it's going to be like a Bombay versus Delhi kind of scenario, which is, which is actually quite interesting. Do you, do you girls have a WhatsApp group also where you, you know, keep updating each other? What's it called if you can? Yes, we do. Do we have many, but there is one which is called private. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so the private one is the interesting one. <laughs> and also, do you make like you know, there's a bigger group, and then there's a smaller, and then the smaller again because we do it all the time. Does that happen with you all? It's a girl thing. We all do it. <laughs> with that, we come to our next segment called Neelam, Neelam, the family woman. So it's intriguing because you know you, you are working and you are back to the screen and you have your business. Uh, what, do, what does a typical day in your family look like? You know, because you, you have uh, children to take care of, you have a husband to take care of. The day looks very mundane and very boring. I wake up, Ahana goes to school, I go to work, I come back, I hit the gym. We have dinner together as a family. That's where all the, the you know, we, we narrate what happened in the day. And uh, that's our together time. And then everyone, we sleep very early, like lights out at 9.30. <laughs> we eat at 7.30, lights out at 9.30. So it's a very boring life. So what's the reaction of your family when they see you on screen? Particularly your daughter, you know, is she excited or does she? So Ahana has not watched Bollywood Wives, uh, thanks to one friend of mine called Mahip Kapoor <laughs> and her profanities. <laughs> so Ahana is not allowed to watch it yet because it's, it's uh, I think, 16 plus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So she hasn't watched it yet. But is she a fan of me uh, coming back and facing the camera? No. Uh, like she said in season one, if anyone has watched it, uh, Samir asks her this question, do you prefer Mama as an actress or do you prefer Mama the jewelry de designer? So she said Mama the jewelry designer and I think she's still sticking to that. She doesn't like the limelight. So talking about, you know, the values, what values uh, do you prioritize the most when it comes to raising your daughter? What is the f that value that you prioritize? So I'm very strict. Um, when it comes to manners, when it comes to respecting el elders and uh, uh, I'm the strict one. Um, even going to someone's house and on a play date, no jumping on the sofa. And Samir is just the opposite. He's like, she's a child, just let her be. I'm like, no, it doesn't look nice. What will people think? And um, 
Touchwood Ahana sort of has has turned out to be a great. Um, she's a great, good girl. She's a great kid, and uh, between Samir and me, there's a great balance because I'm the strict one and he's the lenient one. He's the one who uh, helps her with her science and his and maths, and I'm the one taking her to Dubai and London. <laughs> So I think that that all, I think most of us do because you know one has to be the stricter one otherwise the ch children will not listen to you at all. Both my daughters are listening; <laughs> they're not liking it probably. <laughs> so we come to the next segment. It's called Neelam, the social media maven. So how has social media changed your connection with your fans uh, over the years? Like you know, I know that you've just got an iPhone 16. Oh God! Yeah? <laughs> it was on the social media. Okay, now just just a disclaimer. I had to post that. <laughs> so you know, but how is that connection with the fans? Because um, you know, you're more approachable. Say, for example, I did not meet you, but still, when I see you on social media, I said, okay, I know her very well. You know, that kind of a connection. At least we, as audience, have. Do you feel that same connection with your audience? Is it easy? I think social media has made the world a smaller place. Um, I didn't realize the, the power of uh, social media and Instagram till uh, Fabulous Lives of Bollywood Wives released, season one. I started getting messages from people from Brazil, South America, um, Africa, I mean from all over the world. Um, and if there was no social media, and I normally do not all, but I do respond to my fans and I do respond to their messages. Um, I was just overwhelmed because my, my DM just exploded. And uh, I think you know, Instagram is a great medium for your work. Um, having said that, yes, I think there, there has to be an age limit, an age bar, when kids can come onto it. But I feel you know, if it's done responsibly, um, it's great for work, and I mean, I, I, I sell my jewelry a lot on social media. Do you like sharing your personal life? Because oh, where do you draw a line? Because you know, sometimes some, some people post everything, and uh, but you know, you have to be mindful about what you post. So, do you keep that balance? Yeah, it's I like keep a tip it, to the others also. I keep a balance. I mean, it's not. I don't go crazy. I do post. Uh, I do post um, because you know the reason I constantly post is because you've got to be relevant. People want to know what's going on and you, you know, people want to know where you are, what you up to. So I think, uh, I don't know if I overdo it, do I? I have no idea. But uh, yes, I do post a fair bit, uh, mostly about my work. Do you also waste, I, I mean, you know, spend time watching reels? Ugh. Ugh, those reels. I can watch it for hours and hours before going to sleep. Once I stop, I, I, I get sucked into it. I think that's why, you know, everyone's attention span, even children nowadays. Now, YouTube has come out with the shorts, which I just feel which is, is not good because your attention span just becomes shorter and shorter and shorter. Yeah, that, that's true, but it's very entertaining as well. So I don't know how to... I love it. Especially those videos, those cooking videos where they're chopping and they're eating and they're... <laughs> I love it. <laughs> With this, we come to our last segment. It's called Neelam, the inspiration. Neelam, in your opinion, how, see, we, uh, we hear we are, uh, this uh, segment I kept on purpose because a lot of people look up to you. They get inspired from you. And here we have a mix of, uh, you know, we have entrepreneurs, we have people from the corporate, we have some students, we have people who took a break from their work, you know. Uh, how do you think, uh, you know, in, like in a group, uh, we've seen you supporting each other as friends. How do you think this fraternity, we should uplift each other? What do you think should women do for each other and become inspiring for each other? I think women empowerment is all about lifting and encouraging and um, giving the other one um, the, the, the confidence you know, uh, what does it take to tell another woman, um, hey, you're looking great today. You know, I, it doesn't come out of our mouths that often,
But I think from, as a, from a woman's perspective, when my friends are looking great, I'm like, you're looking fabulous. And, and what does it take just to make someone feel good? And I think women have to encourage and, and support each other and give each other confidence because when you have the confidence to do your business, your whatever your, it is you're doing, um, you know, you can aspire to do anything. And I think it's, it's, your, it's your girl gang that has to do that for you instead of, you know, bringing you down or bickering be behind your back. I think you have to have that, that com comfort with your friends. So I think, you know, we can give each other a safety pin to pin up our saris and also give each other our shoulders to cry on. Yeah. I think that is where the women's strength comes from. So any one message that or something that you want the women sitting here today to take away? from today's session? I mean, I can tell you one thing from my experience and, and the kind of person that I am. I, I always feared what people would say or think, whether it was about a certain role or the way I looked. I don't, I, I think that, um, you know, one message that should go out there, don't fear anything. You know, uh, be it whatever it is, you know, whether you're starting out a new business, you will see your downs and ups and that's all fine. But um, don't fear anything. Thank you. I think that is a very, very important message because a lot of us underestimate, so will this be right? Will this not be right? So with that note, with that very high note, I think we should give a huge round of applause today for Neela. Thank you. It was lovely talking to you and I loved your questions yeah, thank you so much. and uh, you've really done your homework. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So uh, we'll just have a quick photograph with our, yeah. uh, the women committee. They are the people who've been behind putting up this show. Thank you so much. May I request all the team members to please come up? May I request the other, as other dig, uh, dignitaries, the speakers, please to come on the stage for a picture, please. Uh, 
I'd like to request the EC and our board to please come up on the stage. Preeta ma'am, please come. I think let's pose for a picture first. everyone on stage thank you so much i request the speakers thank you everyone i request pooja notyal ma'am preeta ma'am i know you're all looking forward just give us 5 minutes we'll try and manage as many pictures as we can After this, I would want the members of the secretariat to please come on stage. Seema, Jagwant, Rehbar, Yash, Devilal ji, Prakash ji, Jaskirat. Thank you everyone for being on stage. I now request the secretariat to please come on stage. Prakash ji, are you here? Follow. Neelam, we we have a lot of student. We have a lot of student volunteers who were a part of it. Come, 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 come. We had student volunteers who made. Just be very careful, please. I, please be very careful. Please take a quick picture and then we move on. Please take a quick picture and we move on. Everyone say cheese. One, two, three, cheese. After this picture, I request the EC committee, the EC, our executive council, please come on stage. I'd request you to please get down one by one. And I've never been to Please move out.
easy. Uh, I request those who have uh, not collected their goodies. Uh, goodies are being distributed outside. Goodies take a jaiga. I, I request Archana ma'am to please come on diets. Archana ma'am, please come on diets. Preeti ma'am to please come on diets. Archana Aran ma'am to please come on diets. Up class six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are photographers, request you to please click. Thank you everybody, thank you so much. Uh, Uh, we really thanks AB team and event team for this wonderful show G7 and AB team for an excellent work on a screen. Thank you so much. I am really thankful to IPS technical team who were there to present this show on our websites, YouTube and Facebook. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for making this event again a very much successful again. Thank you so much. <laughs>